and there we are three two one and we are live let me take this away okay so hi Louise hello I am I'm trying a new experiment and <laughs> now I have to get rid of this okay here we go <laughs> right hi internet hi everybody and hi. maybe maybe we must just start by saying we missed the comments last time and we hope that it's not a Facebook setting so if you're watching, can you please um, just say hi, we are here. I, in the middle of a broadcast, I can't do anything about fixing settings, but I can go and sort it out afterwards. But Antoinette, you learned something interesting about what people have to do to fix the settings, didn't you? To, to be able to Yeah, connect. apparently they've got a new thing now that if, um if you want to comment on these lives and you want your name and a photograph to be shown you have to agree to that so we have to actually when we post these things now louise post something that says that people go on and they just connect and they agree that they're happy to because basically you're sharing your information so they're trying to avoid people just automatically sharing information that they don't want you. Yeah, okay. So it's it's actually a great thing is for everybody's mm -hmm. privacy, but we are missing everybody. So it's great. It's great if we know you can you can comment. And hello, you can comment. Oh yay! Hello. Okay. Hi, Shannon. Yeah. Nice to see you. Hi, Hi Shannon. Lana. Okay, great. We've got some people here and Remember, give us hearts and likes and comments because that makes Facebook show it to more people. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, oh, well, you know, this topic tonight, Antoinette, how is this for a very hot topic? Um, I know, I know from my own personal experience, I used to feel, <laughs> never mind 160%, I, I, I felt that I was doing 1,000% uh, to keep the relationship going. To keep everything going in some sort of direction, and um, so I want to know if, if there's anybody else who feels that way, or and maybe we can just look at a few uh, hints, maybe a few um, pointers that we can look at to ask ourselves: Am I the one who keeps everything going, or is is somebody else the person who's keeping everything going? So I think the first thing it's really important to look at is to ask people if there was a if there was a fight, who fixes the fight? And that's a big one. Because it if both people fix the fight, then it means that both people accept responsibility. And I don't mean both people fix the same fight, I mean both people take a responsibility to go back in, reconnect, talk about things. And it's not only one person who does that legwork of trying to reach back in, and establish connection, establish communication, and find solutions. Because that's ultimately what we are supposed to do is find solutions. And so that's the first one. The second one is to see... Um, whether there's contribution and contribution in emotional matter I'm going to say is the most important one uh, it, it does touch a little bit about what we talked about last time if you are <clears throat> emotionally available if you are willing to speak about your feelings about why you have a long face about what it is that you need in order to be happy and fulfilled, if you are willing to speak about your boundaries, if you're willing to have boundaries, if you're willing to accept the other person's view, and even if you don't um, agree. So if you're willing to communicate and if you are willing to uh, use your voice and be present, then you are doing your side. And then you have to ask yourself, is the other person doing the same? Okay. So that's the second really big one, emotionally available and willing to talk about, willing to communicate. 
Right. I mean, the third big one is, are you giving the other person time? And are you getting time from the other person? Because if you're not doing that, you are killing the relationship. And if the other person is not doing it, you're killing the relationship. And the relationship is a life thing. It's like this pot plant behind me, which is nearly dead. Because if I don't water it, then it can't survive. And a relationship is exactly like that. You actually have to water it. And two people have to water it, not just one person. And one of the most important ways in which you tell somebody that they matter is by giving them time and asking for time. Not just hope and wishful thinking, but asking for time. That's important from both sides because if you're not willing to give somebody time, if that person is not important enough in your life that you make time for them, why are you in a relationship? That's a really big question to ask yourself and answer yourself. Okay, so again, one more thing that I want to cover tonight is it's, uh, it's what you put in. It's what you put in and it's what the other person put into the relationship. It's the small things. It's the small courtesies. It is the remembering of important days. It is doing something special. It is reaching out and noticing there's a new hairstyle or there's a, uh, something important happening in somebody's life. Noticing what somebody is contributing, not focusing on the negative all the time, but actually actively building the relationship. Now, this number three is extremely important, but we very often can't get to it because we've got such a negative history and so much punishment going on and so much pain of our own that we can't see past it, that we just stop building, we stop contributing, we start uh, making it a positive experience because we focus so much on the negative. And so we need all four of these and we have to be very sure that the other person in our relationship understand that this is our deal or this is this is what's important to us and we have to ask that the other person in the relationship do these things and then the last thing which is uh, really supposed to be a non-negotiable is respect and that's respect for yourself respect for the other person and you it is literally impossible to have a good relationship, a good, healthy relationship, not a codependent one, if you don't respect yourself and you don't respect the other person. And that one is, is near impossible to get past. Okay, let me throw another one in. Okay, and trust, because trust goes in there with the same same um, importance as, as a respect. Trust, Trust is broken. That's a whole subject for another subject. That's a whole talk by itself. But part of trust, a very big part of trust, is for us to learn to trust ourselves and to trust our own worthiness and to trust that somebody will want to be with us. So trust is not about trusting somebody else without, you know, without any disqualifying criteria. Trust is first and foremost about us arriving ready to trust because we believe in our own capabilities and we know that we are lovable and acceptable and that people would want to be with us. So we don't. if we walk into a relationship not knowing that, then we are going to have trust issues and we are going to contaminate our relationship. But at the same time, people have to earn trust. We don't just give it. And this is something that's important from both sides. Okay, that was a mouthful. I think what I must do is to transcribe this whole thing and turn it into a masterclass. <laughs> because these things are so crucial. Don't you think it's a little bit overwhelming, Antoinette? Well, there was a very lot in there and all very big, important things. So, yeah maybe transcribe it or give us a master class that was but i think if we can absorb it it's huge thank you thank you summed it up it's not so easy in real life though <laughs> no it's not easy but these are the principles to get i mean i'm throwing them all in here together principles these are the principles and these are principles that a lot of us don't understand 
we we don't we may understand some of these for us we may understand some of these for the other person but this whole thing about I'm supposed to do my 100% or my 50%. And you're supposed to do your 100% or your 50%. So whichever way you want to look at it. My 100% on working on myself and my 50% contribution to our relationship. That is the way in which we create healthy relationships. But if we don't have a, the examples and we don't um, know what it is to not be in a codependent relationship because most of us are in codependent relationships, then where do we start? So this is the guideline. Rewind, replay, make notes and start asking yourself those big questions. You've got 12 big questions to ask yourself. Number one, what am I doing with number one? What's my partner doing with, with, with number one? Number two, what am I doing with number two? What's my partner doing with number two? Check where are we out of balance. Because this whole journey of self-actualization, this whole journey of growing spiritually, growing into our own magnificent self, trusting and loving ourselves, all of these have to be able to translate into the real world. And the real world is where the relationships are. And the relationships are our tests. The relationships is going to tell us, yes, you've really done all work. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a little bit of work there that you have overlooked because you did it in a place where you were not committed and you didn't have so much to lose and you didn't have fears, fears of losing somebody and people-pleasing starting to play out in your life. So once with those fears start to play out with people pleasing, but the, the abandonment fears, the fears that you will be left not good enough, judged. Then we have to go back to our list. That's when we have to go and like, where, what, where did I lose the plot? Where, what am I not noticing? What I'm not asking my partner? Where I'm not? Where am I not contributing? Because we have to do two things. We have to check our contribution and we have to ask if my partner is not doing this, if my partner is not supporting me emotionally or not willing to share or not having a no or not um, fixing any, any um, fights, let's call it fights, um, then what have I not said? Where is it that I have not ask for something better, where is it that I have um, not made my wants and needs and expectations clear? Where is it that I have not negotiated something better? And then the second question we have to ask ourselves is, why? Which fear is keeping me from opening my mouth? This very valuable instrument that all of us have, my mouth opened it? Why didn't I not open it? Why didn't I ask? Why am I settling? Why am I not asking for more? Why did I choose this person? Why Why am I not contributing? Or why am I holding back? There's a lot of whys. And those ones are hard. That's what makes it hard. But if you start asking the questions and you become present in your relationship, then you can start seeing your own patterns. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to see your own patterns because we like blaming other people. We love, it's our favorite sport. Let's blame somebody else. But blaming somebody else is giving away your power because your power lies in speaking, asking, having a no. Um, and so those are the things that, that we have to pay attention to. That making sense? You make it sound very simple, Louise, but I think when we adult children, firstly, we often don't know what our needs and wants are. Yeah. And often the pattern, uh, the dysfunctional pattern plays out for quite a while before we can even catch it. Um, 
And it's not always easy somewhere down the line to implement things. So it's very important that people know this up front, actually, before they go into a relationship. And the yeah. other thing is, what do you do when, um, yeah, often people don't stand up for themselves or their own needs. So um, they can get bullied or, or people don't want to communicate. So what do you do if one person is... Um, yeah, sometimes people are very different in relationships. So I've raised quite a few things. Yes, where do I start? Okay, All right. so yes, you are right. It's hard to see it. It helps if you have somebody outside of you. So it helps if you have a coach or a, somebody else outside of you, somebody who can help you see your patterns because we are slightly blind when it, when it comes to our own imperfections. And our our own patterns and um we just it's a blind spot we really struggle with that but and our codependent friends are the last people who can help us they can't because everybody struggles with the same thing so but what what's really important is that you keep showing up you know if we ask anybody who has seen most like how since when have we been doing this last year september or end of september i think internet and if you ask anybody who's been watching what we are talking about week after week and it's not always the same subject but there's a central theme in it self-love self-respect become aware start paying attention I and mean, that's the central theme that's there every single week and you're not going to get everything every single week, but show up and put your attention where you want to go. If you are putting your attention on healing yourself and really um, learning new skills and new outlooks, and you start spending time there for yourself, you will get there. You will get there eventually. I mean, that's why I love live groups, because you can sit there and you can sit there and you can sit there for three months and one time, one day. You just hear something that somebody says and it starts to click. And so it, it helps if you if you can find somebody who can help you. That's the fast way. It, 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 it will definitely help if you keep on putting your attention. Show up every week. You know, just show up every week. I have written my book specifically the way that I help people. This, this is the way that I help people. I started writing it in my head while I was helping people. I was thinking... Wow, I say this to everybody. Let me write it down. It has a 70-page workbook with it, which are these questions. It's these questions that I ask every single week, they're in there. They are chronologically organized, or, or you can dip in, you can go to boundaries first, you can do that. So if you start doing that, you get, you get great results if you work through it slowly and you really answer the question. Because our most powerful tool is this, what I've said tonight. Ask yourself the questions. And 12 questions is not going to fix your relationship, but it's going to drastically change it. 12 questions are not going to give you all the answers. 12 questions will not illuminate every, every why. It won't answer every why, because our why is important. We want to go and heal our why. Our, our why is, is is nearly always in self-preservation and self-preservation does not make relationships grow growing ourselves make relationships go grow i should write down that quote i think because it's it's really important to notice that self-preservation does not make relationships go, grow that is our why how can i protect myself but growing ourselves that is when we grow our relationships, when we grow ourselves. So I don't know. I think I've answered one of your questions, Antoinette. Oh, that was perfect. Maybe other people have got questions. Yeah, yeah I'm going to check now. All right. Let me see. The point of where am I not showing up in the relationship is usually the point of power to repair. Oh, yes, yes, you're completely right, Linda. That is... Figuring it out is the play when you when you get it, where am I not showing up? Using my my voice. My voice is my power. 
but I also have to use it constructively in the right way. So not judging or blaming or shaming somebody else or punishing somebody else, but to actually really go and find out where did I, where did I go wrong? And not as in blaming myself, but as in what did I not have a no for? Where was I people pleasing? Where was I so scared of rejection, rejection that, I, that I didn't actually ask for better? Those are usually where we go wrong. Hi, Mia. Nice that you are making it live. All right. Let's see what Linda says. I found that the thing I seek the most in a relationship is usually why. Oh, this is prof profound. Um, Linda, this is profound. And it's something that, that it's, it, it's absolutely worth noticing. The thing that I seek the most, and I mean, just everybody think for a minute, what is it that you seek the most? I can tell you for absolutely sure. The thing that I have wanted the most in all the years has been um, somebody that would share their feelings with me. And I talk easily, and I'm, but I wasn't connected to my real feelings. I couldn't ask somebody else just to share their real feelings because I wasn't connected to my fear. I didn't know how much I feared then. I thought I had no fears. I thought I was bulletproof, you know, so, doing just fine, <laughs> except for this one little problem, which was my husband, you know, not me. Um, and I had to learn myself how to, how to identify my fears and my needs and learn to be very specific about them before um, I could get it back. And you're not always going to get back what you want, but you have. I I got happy when I learned to do that. Then doesn't necessarily mean I got it back, but I got happy when I learned to identify my own feelings, the thing that I wanted the most, the connection, and when I made that connection with myself. What about you, Antoinette? Uh, what about me? Um, <laughs> the thing you want the most so in a relationship is usually what I most need to give. I have to contemplate that. I think it's very profound, but I would need to um, reflect on it before I can say anything because it, ha it isn't something I've considered. So thank you, Linda. I think it's big. Yeah, it's probably it's true, big. yeah, but I would have to think about it. <laughs> Yeah, there's another way of putting it. Let me put it in in, in, in a it's a it's the same kind of thought. That thing that you really want, let's say this is tonight we're talking. You want to be appreciated for your contribution. You want somebody to notice you. Are you doing it for the other person, or are you criticizing and fixing? Are you actually noticing who the other person are? and accepting them because we all want to be loved and accepted. We all want to be loved and accepted for who we are. Cannot get it. If you don't love and accept yourself and if you don't love and accept the other person, you have to put that in. Do you, want to, do you want something to hear you? Do you actually want to have a conversation where you walk out and you, go, and you feel like, ah, oh, this person just got me. Wow, this person... Really listened and just got me because this is universal. We all want it. Ask yourself, am I doing that? Am I keeping myself silent long enough? Do I shut up and listen without composing long lectures about how I'm going to fix this person or how I am being innocent? Do I really listen? That's magic. That's a tiniest little thing that you can change today. You want, if you're feeling frustrated because you're never hurt, check yourself. Check yourself. See if you are actually doing the same for the other person. By the way, how on earth do you go and ask somebody to actually listen to you if you, if you don't do it? It's like start with yourself. You start with yourself, you put this in, and then you actually have a chance to get it. While you are 
talking over somebody, correcting somebody, um, lecturing somebody, parenting somebody, fixing somebody, or what we talked about last time, being innocent, justifying, um, you know, making excuses, um, counter-blaming, I mean, you are actually not in a position to ask for somebody to listen to you. And it is a universal need, and it's one of the biggest problems that we have in relationships. And, and listen, not, not in all our relationships. In our work relationships, magic when you start listening to people. Magic. In our friendships, magic when you really listen and then try and correct. Magic. In all our relationships, I am today trying to fix my my um, writing program, Scrivener. I mean, it's an amazing program, and I am now on letter free because the woman didn't listen, she didn't read my very short paragraph and just help me with what I asked. I'm now to the stage where I've already asked her, please let somebody else help me because. She you are not listening to me. So, you know, my frustration levels are growing. And now the emails are this a mile long. And, and, and it was a little paragraph when it started. And that is the way in which we escalate things by not listening. Okay, listening universal and, and for us to do it too. Yeah, I don't think I'm very good at listening. So thank you for that. <laughs> okay, now... Um, Mia, you're going to have to elaborate for us on that because uh, that was a bit cryptic. I don't, I'm not getting that one. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, and Antonia, I mean, what you just said, not good at, not good at listening to, to people. Um, if we own that one, we have to go at the same time and go, we go like, oh, what do I do instead of listening? Because we all have a preferred thing that we want to do. And it's usually going to go to one of the two places where we step into the parenting role, the parenting teacher fixing role where we want to fix this person, or where we step into the child role where we want to be innocent and we don't um, we don't want to be um, we just you know, we just want to justify or explain away why we are innocent. And both of those we can also take turns. We can take turns going to parent and role or into child role, and both of them are completely debilitating to our relationship. So ask yourself, when you're not listening, which is your favorite role? Which one you gravitate to most? Because that's going to help you to to fix something. Oh, okay. So are you not listening to your kids? Is this a <laughs> a public confession, Mia. <laughs> uh, and, you know, here's the thing. Whoever we don't listen to, we are usually guilty with everybody in our lives. It's a, We don't have a habit of, I'm just going to not do this thing in relationships. <laughs> we, just, we just have a bad habit. And we take it into our whole life, across everything. We don't listen to our friends. We don't listen to the person in the supermarket. We don't listen when somebody complains about this Scrivener update. <laughs> we don't listen when, um, when, when somebody is telling us about something that makes them unhappy. I mean, that's a big one. Not listening when somebody tells us about something that makes them unhappy. We, we don't want to know. We want to tell them why we can't be unhappy. They shouldn't be unhappy. Like, really seriously, why would you be unhappy? I will tell you why you shouldn't be unhappy, as if it's, that's our business. And all we otherwise we are, I am not the cause of your unhappiness, you know. I'm so innocent. And so we have to tell you about I cannot be guilty of anything, and that's all I'm going to be telling you, that I'm not guilty, and sometimes I need to make you guilty so that I cannot be guilty. So um, that's a big one. Right. Yeah. We listen to cor correct or fix or to defend, and, and the defending is a, it's a big one. Are we the same one now? Wait, let me see. Oh, they don't listen. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is wonderful. I love this one, Mia. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, your kids will tend to recreate what they learned from you through example. And okay, but I mean, there's more to this one, Mia, because if we are apologetic about stuff, people don't listen to us. If we feel guilty about what we're telling them about putting boundaries, they don't listen to us. So yeah, I would suggest with children, you start there. If you are really in any way feeling guilty, they're going to know it, the little buggers, and they're going to exploit that. And um, in, in general, people know when we feel guilty about boundaries and they don't listen because they, they have figured out already we're not that serious about it. We would rather break our boundaries and lose them in our lives. And then we're like, I just put a boundary. What happened there? Was I speaking to a ghost or what? You know, but it is because we are apologetic <laughs> and deep, deep down, we may think we mean it, but deep down, our abandonment fears are so so big that um, it's just not effective. People know it. People just know it. When you know that your, your boundary is, is tight, other people know it too. Until you know it, you're just speaking. You're not really putting boundaries. So if your kids go check that first. And if you do, Mia, if you do have a habit of speaking over them or not actually listen to them, apologize and ask them that from now on. Let's start over and do it differently. If I interrupt you, please tell me. If you feel that I'm not giving you attention, please tell me. I want to give you attention. You are important to me. And I'm going to ask that you do the same for me. Will you do that for me? Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, that's a great, quite grown-up conversation. You can have him with children of any age. You can have him with a five-year-old. You can have him with a 55-year-old. doesn't matter. And you can have this conversation with anybody doesn't matter you just it, that's called a self-respecting other respecting conversation to have but i hope that helps mia i'm still intrigued when to know more all right Anthony, anything from you mm, that was invaluable but uh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I have a lot to show up for in relationship, I think, but it's a, it's a journey. So thank you. That was very useful. You know, Antoinette, all I, I mean, I know this. I understand that I have given in 10 minutes the gist of really what makes relationships work, but it's not a 10-minute topic. It's something to start us off start reflecting to go back to like where's the one thing i can become aware of where's the one thing that i can actually fix so it's not like i've got 10 minutes and i'm just quickly going to tell you how to fix your life and it's just creating awareness that there's something different from our habitual patterns that stuff that we are stuck on and that's all we need to do we have to start by knowing that something else is out there and something else is available to us even if we didn't have a parental guidance even if we didn't have a healthy ex example even if we've gotten stuck in a codependent relationship even if we lost ourselves somewhere because so many of us lose ourselves somewhere along the way you know if you if you if you think about who was i when i was 18 or 19 and hopeful for myself and all these hopes and dreams i had for myself and all these plans and ideas that things were going to work out this way and like hello what the heck happened you know where did i where, who am i where did i go to so we are so many um habits and outlooks that we have to examine and we have to remember who we are in our core you know we we were not born full of fears and we were not born doubting ourselves and not loving and respecting ourselves we were not born that way we gave up little pieces of ourselves and that means that we can claim it back and we can we can learn all these these are just tools these are just habits these are just outlooks and when we learn them and we start implementing them, absolute magic starts happening. And I want that magic for everyone because it's called self-empowerment. It's called self-empowerment. These are the things that we're talking about. Self-empowerment. When you feel good about yourself and when you, you know how to communicate, you, you have healthy outlooks, you're aware of your own contribution. 
self empowerment. I just love it. It's it, uh, it's it's the most exciting thing in the world, and I do want everybody to have, have it. So how about I make a note about these six things that I have mentioned, and then um, maybe I turn it to, into a course or something, a short six day course and um, small group and work through the interaction there. I'm just throwing an idea out there. It's not something that I will do immediately, but if anybody's interested, let me know and I'll put you on a wait waiting list. It's nice to know people are interested in something before I create it. But um, I do know these are the big questions. So these are the things that we seriously have to, to work on. Actually, it's, it should be the part, it, it should be the curriculum for the, for my relationship retreat, the one that I keep on thinking I'm having in my in my dreams. <laughs> so, maybe post COVID there'll be a relationship retreat like that, and we can actually work as a couple through that. Because this is what I think is the most important thing that nobody should actually work on these things by themselves. It's so much better if you work on it as a team. Okay, any questions from anybody else? Nobody? Okay, remember anybody, if you want to comment, then you have to go and tell Facebook that you that you like StreamYard, something to, something like that, I think. And uh, um, maybe somebody must tell us how to do it. Uh, okay, so Linda, isn't it also great if two people know, you know, the story? Okay, it does as you said take practice to change and to focus on it. But I mean, here's the thing. When you do that, when you do this, Linda, and everybody else, how amazing is that feeling of self-empowerment when you for the first time try something that you never believed possible and somebody actually listens to you and hears you and you feel effective. I mean, that is just the most, most amazing thing. And then you start to have peace in your life. This is like, wow. This, this is amazing stuff, people. Okay, I want you all to get excited about it because it really does work. Um, and if anybody's tried this in their life, please go there and go give me a little like there at the little hearts. I can see them on the screen. I like the little hearts. So, um, yeah, like Linda, yes. Okay. All right. Hey, give me a private message me, and uh, we'll talk about it. And, um, um, yeah, there you go. That's exactly two makes it so much easier. It's just so, so amazing. If two people actually know what codependency is, let's just start with that. And if two people actually know what is a good relationship, we have similar goals, amazing stuff. Okay, so this week's masterclass on Thursday, uh, which is an hour first hour earlier than this one for people who are not in South Africa, so it's 6 p.m. for us, is going to be about shame and about how shame is keeping us back, the reasons for our shame and how it shows up and how it's limiting ourselves. So um, if, you, if you are holding yourself back in many ways, because we don't always know that we've got shame, I mean, I want you to go look in your emails. And if you're not getting emails, let me know. And um, we've got the shame masterclass on this Thursday coming up. We've been promising it for a long time, but actually we are doing it this week. So I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> We're doing it. There's going to be a... A worksheet with it and um, until tomorrow about this time you'll have a chance to sign up for two master classes and get the third one free by $17 each so if you want all three of them and you want to have that special you've got to do it by tomorrow this time okay so anything holding you back and you don't actually know what the name of it is you want to join us for the shame master class Okay, and also if you are going, if you've done stuff in your life that, that, that you are really struggling to put behind you. First day. Okay, Antoinette, anything from you? 
Um, no, just to say thank you, Louise. That was very insightful and much needed, <laughs> certainly for my part. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can transcribe this. This is not one of my, my skills in life, but it will be quite neat if I do that and I go and post it inside the group and people can go and get a, a, a checklist there. But I'm not promising anything. I'm, I've been extremely useless for the last while and taking very care, good care of myself and not showing up for for Sunday seats, which I know that now going to be called um, weekend seats and I'll be showing up when I can or when I can't, I, I don't. But I'm still around and we'll we'll still keep on doing this. So thank you all for coming and thanks, Adonet, for asking good questions. And thank you all. And let me just see. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Right. And um, next week, we'll see what we do. Do you know the story? We don't know until we know what we are doing. And I'm looking for the song. And we're going to be going out in a minute. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. Do I have a right one here? Yes, I do. Okay. Thanks for coming. Please, if you watch and you know that somebody is needing this, please share it with them. It's shareable on my profile. And... Um, Keep on giving us those likes and hearts and um, comments, and we will come back and we'll comment um, later today or tomorrow. Okay, love you lots. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, Antoinette.